All right. So um, I, I don't think I will take all the hour today and this might be the shortest one. Um, and let's see, I know I did not do a good job, but I think we will uh, convert this discussion to, uh, sorry, convert this um, sort of presentation to more of a discussion format. I guess that, that would be the best way to take it. Um, so yeah, I think um, this the title for this is uh, Passing Multiple Arguments Without Dots. Uh, but before we do that, uh, I think it it just might make sense to sort of review what, what we have done so far. Uh, so using our link package, it allows us to um, use a pass arguments, uh, which could be, you know, many things, data, frame. Um, sorry, my little one is throwing his <laughs> stuff to me. <laughs> um, and columns and all, all the other things and values and constants and stuff like that. Uh, but I think the challenge comes mostly when we're talking about columns, single and multiple and so on. Um, so based on what we've done, so uh, what we've learned so far is um, of all the different operators that uh, our line provides us to you to develop that uh, functionality or, or to provide that flexibility to your users or to yourself is to use embrace operator. And it works beautifully uh, when we have a single variable uh, that we want to pass as an argument. So in, in empty cars, you want to do an operation on cycle, um, cylinder, sorry, CYL. You can use that in a maybe you know column name var and use uh, double curly brackets. This is, that represents an embrace operator. Um, for multiple arguments, I think this was discussed last or last or last week, uh, that we uh, it's suggested to use dots and then you can pass on all the variable names that you need uh, to use in your function um, and uh, for example group by or you pass them as um, one second I think my screen is showing so many pictures um, so you can pass them as a character vector using a c function or you know a I think concatenation or character, however you say it, uh, for, for functions that use tidy selection. Um, and the reason why I sort of repeated this is because we are going to pick up from here. Um, so this, uh, so for the approach where we want to be able to use, we want to be able to pass multiple arguments or multiple um, column names in into one argument, a named one argument, uh, we would, we could there are there are um, multiple ways that this particular document or sorry yeah this particular Arlang doc talks about um, so in in this particular page it says you know you could use tidy selections you could use external diffusal uh, or you could use a non-approach parsing list I'm not sure what how you know by that name it sort of doesn't explain so well but basically using lists is what it suggests. Um, and I think we talked about diffusal, John, you, you did that discussion. So I will rely heavily on you to, um, sort of bring up that discussion because I think I, I don't think I, I perfectly, um, a, a, you know, imbued all, all that was discussed the other day. So I'll start with tidy selection, um, uh, and within tidy selection. And I think for me, this sort of covers quite a big, um, options or situations that I come across. So, um, I mean, knowing this itself is has been good enough for me. So with, when, when I say tidy selection, we're talking about two different kind of uh, functions. I think that we've started to learn about how to, or at least for me, I, I learned that, you know, some um, in within the tidyverse ecosystem, most of our functions either they use tidy selection or they work in tidy selection manner or they um what is it called they they work with data masking so for the functions that use tidy selection you could pass multiple columns in a single argument using a c operator or c function um, which is what i was talking about earlier or if there are functions like group by which take data masked arguments you could use in a cross and this was definitely new for me inside for example if it's a group by function and you could still pass on you know uh, multiple values in var or you know any any argument that you are talking about pass that with the embrace operator inside a cross and it it'll work 
absolutely fine um so one one uh, in this third point it wasn't there wasn't really an example there but they said if you are not able to pass a single argument inside c or the across situation doesn't work then you should be able to manually use tidy select colon colon eval select which is an eval uh, family of function and um, my way is uh, I guess maybe a mix of a few of those things and I don't know why this doesn't show my function. Um, I can quickly switch to this view. Oh, I think because the default, I, I had to do echo false. Um, so the, the embrace operator approach that I was talking about earlier is, you know, the single variable, you define an argument, you pass the column name to it. And I think this works fine without strings. Um, and this having two curly braces on both sides is how it identifies that it's a column name. And then you basically, here you are taking the name to define your group by, and in terms of its operation, it is going to take those you know entire column values and group them. Um, and it also apparently works absolutely fine with favorite longer and then the reason why these two different examples are given is because this is the tidy selection format and this is the data masking uh, format or the function that takes that performs data masking um, the other example talks about the dot 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 john's favorite uh, and in here uh, you could simply pass all your dots into c and then uh, you know, go ahead and use it. So let's look at this example. Um, so here, uh, talking about this example, my pivot longer, you could go on and define the function as it is. And in, in this var, which is your named argument here, if you just passed all your column names, the multiple column names that we said is, is our current problem, pass that into a C and this works absolutely fine. Um, and for to resolve the data masking uh, situation, you could pass the same thing inside and across in the data masking uh, function. Uh, and then, you know, the function call here remains the same or passing the argument in this function. Uh, and my way is, I'm not sure it's somewhere in the middle of these maybe, um, but like I was saying, I have not, I had not figured out, oops, I not figured out a way to how I could, you know, still use the C function and without quotes, I could send my column names. So I have settled and used this multiple times where I um, pass on all the column names as strings, uh, you know, comma separated. So basically this defines my uh, character vector. I think that's the right way to say it. And then uh, I use our lang sims. Uh, this is the named variable or named argument, which with uh, three bang, 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 bang operators. And the way I read it is um, when when we when I have multiple values, which you know are comma separated. So for multiple operators, I need the you know triple bang. If it's single value, then I would use double bang. Um, and the sim function, not the sims function. So sims is basically plural. Um, yes, so that's the sort of, I wanted to give my bonus and my my uh, example, which I think, like I was saying, I, I've settled on and it, it mostly works for me. Um, if I have to use this in, in uh, pivot longer, uh, I think uh, it would work without the bang bang. That's how I I think I've used it. Yeah, for uh, pivot longer, it's just looking for the characters anyway. So yeah, you can just yeah that you can just port it and it's no problem. Yeah. Um, so now that you have seen the across way of doing it, do you think you'll switch or just keep doing it the way you've been doing it? Um, I definitely can switch because I think the benefit that I get is, you know, the, I, I wasn't really happy doing all the quoting of the variable yeah. names. So definitely. And in fact, even the, uh, yeah, definitely. I think across and I, I would definitely be using both of them, right. both 
the you know across for the data masking functions and i mean this has been i mean i i actually like i literally find it beautiful because you know you don't have to do anything uh, other than uh, looking at you know like i know this is going to be my variable name and i just you know call it inside an embrace and it just takes care of everything so there can be nothing better than this right it, this this example oh sorry it was this example yeah so no coating no no more you know confusion between double bangs or triple bangs so i think i'm going to try to switch and <laughs> hopefully that works i think the the challenge still could be when when we have to do the assignment with the very vari new variable name um that i'm not sure how that how easy or difficult that would be but you're getting there yeah. i just i i like that uh you're presenting this one because this is basically why you're here right <laughs> <laughs> yeah um so yeah the second portion of this was uh you know it, it says approach to be able to do that is called using external diffusal and the reason why i'm quoting this is because I don't think I can explain what this says, um, but uh, I would maybe have you, John, come uh, explain this. But uh, before that, I'll just finish up this portion where um, it, it sort of explains what external diffusion means is basically think of it. I mean, I think it's easier to explain this with an example when um, we pass a formula into a function, or for example, the LM function, you, and, and this has, I think been happening already if, if you think about it so lm function you pass uh you, what your left hand side is going to be and what your right hand side is going to be and you know you pass the entire formula function like this um and then what happens is basically inside the function call it first quotes it and then unquotes it um to you to you know bring the formula back into its form um and I guess I'll just pause here. So modeling function takes a formula in a regular argument and the formula diffuses the user's code. So the, the function, um, sorry, the formula that you pass as a user of this LM function is what gets diffused inside the formula, uh, the function. And then over to you, John, for this discussion. Uh, I don't have sorry, a whole I lot put, to add. I put just, you on spot, yeah. I'm sorry. Um, I, I just, it's interesting because I know they, you know, they changed or they added to how faceting works in ggplot2 and I most of the time still use the really old way because I can never, because it's not standard. It's like uh, we can't implement the same thing that we did in all of our other packages because people who have been using this forever would be confused. So we implemented a new thing that no one wants to, you know, that is different from everything else. It's like, well, is that better? <laughs> so, um, yeah. So I end up doing or, the formula, old formula way. What? Or facet wrap and facet grid, at least. I like having the formulas because you essentially think like on grid, it's like you got your X axis variables. Yep. It's like there pretty much makes sense to me. Especially if you uh, internalize to pronounce tilde as by in uh, in those formulas, then uh, you know facet wrap by x, facet grid x by y, it, like it just makes sense. So that's that's also partly why I like decast more than pivot wider. It's just it's like <laughs> it just makes sense. That feels spicy. <laughs> <laughs> Is that data tables decast? Is that what you're talking about? Yeah. yeah so there for spicy. pivot wider, you just have like your like your primary key or your composite key on the left hand side, and then all of your columns go out on the right. It's like whatever you want to be columns, or whatever you still want to have like the same as it was before. That goes on the left hand side. Anything you want wider goes out on the right. Hmm. Uh, I'm not doing a great job of explaining it. And I thought <laughs> it makes a lot more sense if you just look at it. And I wrote a blog post about it, and it, I definitely made more sense then. 
I think I I think yeah, it's I'll like it I I wrote I used it once because when I was converting from like data table to from tidy r to data table and i wrote a note to myself when i wrote that code but i don't remember where that is let's see oh it's in private read though that would explain it uh i will i'll write the comment back i linked directly to like this section but if you look Moving at the first code from across to pick is pick just across is that what you're is that what it says there right there yeah, so we, we were going, I'm in another club where we're going through, we're reading the docs for deep plier, or we'll, we just finished uh, doing that. And one thing that kind of came up is with uh, deep plier 1. I guess 1.1, 1. 1, um, uh, it, it seems like the, the tidyverse team is, um, well, so in, in the examples we've seen so far, where we're basically kind of um, taking us, taking a selection, um, we're using a cross, right? But a cross, at least by its name, would seem to indicate that it's going to like apply a function across like, you know, for each to each element um, that's being selected. But still you can basically use a cross to like take a selection or returns a tibble, right? So you're just selecting columns. Um, but here they're saying like the, the team thinks that that's sort of an unnatural or unexpected way in which to use a cross and they, they're, I think they're tending now to prefer the use of pick, which was uh, devised for this purpose, where you're basically just taking That's a like selection without, without, yeah, exactly, for the bridge type stuff, where you're just taking a selection, but not applying a function immediately to all elements of the selection. So all that to say, the... like, we might find in future that we need to pick, pick, as it were. <laughs> so where, so right now they have, um across in the bridge patterns so like in the data mask bridge and then they're going to replace the across recommendation with pick is that right uh i mean so they've not said that exactly but i think that that's only like a logical consequence in... of what you find here yeah yeah so just that's like thinking about only like, for selection so thinking about this specific part uh bridge patterns um yeah, I think it'll probably be pick in future when they update that. But yeah, I, I'm not sure how strongly they feel about pick right now, but it's interesting some of the documentation, um, uh, I think even some of the column wise the articles, the vignette there might've referred to pick at various points or at least maybe it's real wise. But anyway, pick, pick is starting to show up in at least the dplyr documentation beyond just the function documentation. It hasn't yet kind of like um, propagated to, to the rest of Tidyverse documentation that I know of. Uh, let's, see. let's see. Oh, and to Gus's question, I found a, I found my comment in private repo. I think the reason why my mental model works differently is that I just assume everything that isn't referred to in names from and values from are the ID columns. So I expect that behavior. Um, I Going think back. I got thrown for a loop because I started learning R right when they were making the switch from like gather and spread. And then it's like, we've got pivot wider and pivot longer. No one really knows how they work, but also you don't want to try and learn gather and spread right now because they're bad. <laughs> and so like, there's me, like you can see my code from that era if you want, it's on GitHub and like, it's bad. <laughs> so, so this is the on, this is the comment itself. And I don't think oh, that's particularly bad to share. Okay. But if you yeah. click on like the data table tab, you can see the it's like you have time and attendance on the left and then the short name. So amulet through fury go out on the right. See. I'm just used to tie a pivot wider handling everything. And then you just go, the value is short name, right? Values from X and then names from short name. And then everything else is a pivot, like ID call. It will, data table will assume and try and choose the value variable, but for the sake of showing people then. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. I'm with it. 
All right. Uh, successfully distracted on two different tracks. <laughs> and now we're back, I think. Did that answer the did that answer a question? I don't I, I actually lost track of what question we're talking about. Uh, uh different ways of just... using facet. Yeah. Okay. All right. Go ahead. All right. So uh, I mean we can continue to discuss because this is, I guess, the last bit. Um so this one is so I don't know why they call it non-approach or you know, parsing list, uh, but and all of this text is from, from the document. So essentially what this really is saying, so, so similar to the C function approach, you could, you know, simply, uh, the user could simply pass multiple arguments within a list expression, and you will be then evaluating the list and then using bang, bang, bang to retrieve or splice those values, um, which in, in, in my mental model is the same thing. Uh, what C was doing and uh, embrace was removing all of that um, or or even the example that I I was used to using um, let me otherwise if so if it's a single variable you do injection operator uh, this way and otherwise a multiple arguments it's like this so let's see the example here this is a complicated one but essentially what we're talking about is you use explicitly quote your uh, expression and then you unquote it using bang bang. Um, so here what it is really doing is getting your expression, getting the environment and then creating a closure. Um, I think what this example means is that I should have probably picked up some stuff from the closure document also that um, from the advanced R book. I think um, John had shared, and I did look into that, but um, and I kind of got some bits of it, but I it was for, very difficult for me to explain it. So, uh, and what that document really was talking about, I think the easiest thing to explain out of that is what closure is, and closure basically is a new kind of object which does not exist in base R and R lang provides is. Uh, it's an object which provides you um, an, an enclosed environment which has the variable or the argument and the environment uh, along with it. So, um, and then that's why, you know, the these functions from, I imagine, Arlang, um, the, you know, it, it gives you that option to get the expression and get the environment. So you have the data and you have the environment when, when we are uh, working with a closure and then as underscore closure is a function that lets you create a co uh, closure. So there are three ways that document mentioned it. You could use co and unco, um, you could use as underscore closure and, uh, and a version of co and unco in, in a different word. I could probably, I don't know how this get this thing out. Is it a, Thing. Mm. How can I? Okay, I will do some tumble way. Good. This one. And, and yeah, I think um, uh, towards the end, then this also talked about tidy selection. So I was like, let's just focus on talking about tidy selection or tidy evaluation. Uh, yeah, this bit, which says how you would create a closure and how you would evaluate. And then you can use dots. So this thing didn't make sense to me. So these are the three methods you could use NCO and NCOs functions to capture the user supplied expression, co and co's and, and co and in co's. Um, but this, this style is rarely used. This is the most common one or most suggested. And this allows you to create a closure with its components. Um, and that's all I think I want to cover here, but I'll go back to this discussion and let's talk about the example. 
Um, so this is for data masking thing. So if if it's a list, if you're um, if you know if you are using the list uh, way or a list approach, you could you could check what all you need to do to get to your uh, multiple argument multiple column names as an argument. If not, you could just use. So if basically if you have more multiple arguments, you do this. If it's single, just do this. Um, I, I think I would personally go with the one that can take care of uh, both of them together. So in um, sort of just to conclude, of, I mean, although this is a conclusion, but again, they said two things. Um, it would be better for overall consistency of interfaces to use tidy select syntax, which is the C function for passing multiple arguments. And I am bought on that, but then they also say in general, we recommend using tidy select or external diffusal approaches. So two out of the three are recommended and you can choose which one works for you. So uh, let's see the diffusal example. Do I want to show this again? Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's about it. That's all I have for today. All right. Cool. Um, I don't have anything to add. Um, I I have done the uh, pass arguments as list because, again, because I didn't know what else to do. Like the same idea. It's like, oh, OK, now I, I think I can write better code um, that doesn't have to do janky just random, you know, ugly stuff like this. So, <laughs> um, yeah. All right. Anyone have any other thoughts around uh, passing multiple arguments? All right. Just pass dots. That's always my rule. <laughs> Most like of the time, yeah. yeah. Uh, and then <laughs> sometimes you, you need multiple. Sometimes you need separate groups, and that's when you can't pass dots. <laughs> yeah, it generally, it's like, oh, you've you, it. So I, I use it as a code smell, <laughs> and then uh, refactor to use <laughs> another set of dots. So <laughs> it, you know, complexity wise, it's like your function's too complicated if you need to handle so many oh, dots. Let's put that generally way. what it would happen or when it would happen for me would be if I'm like making a convenience function that is basically two functions. It's like call this one, then that one. And it's like, well, I need the dots for that one and the dots for that one. So supply them as a list, except no, supply them as tidy select or, you know. Um, so uh, I've definitely, like I know a case right now, I know something that I'm gonna go clean up, so. Um, Actually, no, no, I don't. That one uses passing the dots. So, uh, but when you when you, you, know, pass you need more than dots, passing the dots, it's too much. But, but uh, uh, does it make sense when when you have a function which already has lots of arguments in it, like you know the data frame name and the constants, um, and you know yes no flags maybe, and then some column names which you which you're thinking could be just dots. Like, I can't tell you a hard and fast rule for when not to use dots, but like, I, you know, I like to think of them as, or it needs to be clear that they're the uh, et cetera and that they mm -hmm. can have variable length that, um, you know, because if it's just one argument, then it shouldn't be dots. It should be a named argument. Um, right. If it's a constrained set of arguments, it should be still be named arguments uh but if it's just unknown length other things yeah just use dots um and i think um today's discussion also i mean it it doesn't matter whether you know your chain of operations um has data masking function or tidy selection function because you can still pass it the difference would be that you pass c 
the dots inside see if it's tidy selection, otherwise just the dots. Okay. It, yeah, basically it just depends on what the arguments are in the target function. If it's expecting dots or if it's expecting a single argument that you, you know, that's when you wrap it in C is to make that single argument. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I um, can only recall one situation where I ended up using fil um, dots was when I had to create a um, dynamic filter, uh, like the condition inside a filter, uh, which was based on what column you user would use and what value they would want to use. Those were supposed to be user driven or you know they were meant to be user inputs. So taking that user input and then converting it into a string, you know, a quoted version of saying X is equal to five. And then that is what I want to pass. And sometimes maybe, you know, this se separated by a comma and another um, condition. So quotes Y is equal to seven. And that's the, both of the conditions you want to pass into that. So for that, I think I had used a filter, like the input inside the filter was this. So this was dots for some reason. <laughs> Uh, yep. Yeah. All right. Anything else? Um, okay. I guess we can stop. All right. I will go back to preparing my uh, presentation for tomorrow.